And we're back with another Pico CTF challenge, this time so meta, a forensics challenge. Description, find the flag in this picture. We'll download the picture, we'll bring it to our desktop and take a look at the hints. What does meta mean in the context of files? And then ever heard of metadata? Let's take a look at this guy. It's a series of circles, okay. So metadata is data that describes data. So something that's not the primary focus, as an example, in an image. If you take uh, a picture, the image, the actual picture of the Golden Gate Bridge, that's the data. Then you have data that describes it, things like where it was taken, who it was taken by, how large it is, the dimensions of it. So that's what it's encouraging us to look at. And there are a variety of tools that you can use to look at things. One of them is EXIF tool. We'll try EXIF tool on Pico image. And we'll run through what we have here. We have file size, modification time. We've got the dimensions of the image, bit depth, color. And then we can see here we have artist and it's a flag. Let's give that a shot. Now don't turn it off because what we're going to do is we're going to learn a little more whenever you run into a very easy challenge. It's, it's worth learning more and exploring so that you don't just end up some smooth brain who, if the tool spits out an answer, you're perfectly fine. And if it doesn't, you're screwed. So let's talk about other ways we could have arrived at this. Well, we could have tried strings on this image and we could have grept. Grep is, is just searching over what's returned case insensitive for Pico, and we would have found it. Additionally, we could have looked at the hex representation of everything. So we could have looked up, for example, how PNGs are specified. Wikipedia has a great uh, article here. And we'll scroll down and we can see there's a file format that's defined, which has a header. So they normally call this magic bytes. Let's open this up so we can follow along. I'll use G hex, but you could use another hex editor. There are definitely a lot of them. This is a nicer one. And I'll try to zoom this as well. If I can't, let's try. All right, I'll zoom in in editing. I'll make this larger. And let's just quickly talk about what we're looking at here. On the left side, you have the addresses. So we're starting at position zero, and then we've each line appears to be about 23 bytes, 23 bytes exactly, not like 23 bytes, 23 bytes. In the middle, we have the raw bytes represented as hex. So here's the first byte, second byte, third byte. On the right, we have the representation of the bytes as ASCII. So it's decoded where it's a printable character to things like P N G. So we've mentioned that there's this magic byte or this uh, header, and that tells you what a file is because otherwise a file is just a series of bytes and it could be anything. So it says 89, 50, 4 E, 47, 0 D, 0 A. Yeah, so this makes sense and this matches up. As we continue down, we can learn more about the format. And by reading these specs, I also have uh, the W3C spec over here that we'll go to in a minute. You can learn more about how PNGs are represented. It says here it's a series of chunks within a file after the header, each of which conveys information. Chunks declare themselves as critical or ancillary. And then we get into the definition of a chunk. It has a length that it defines. That length tells you how much data it will convey. It declares what its chunk type is, and it has a checksum just to make sure that nothing is corrupted. So here we get into critical chunks. So for example, the, the I header, which will tell us the width, the height, the bit depth. These are all things that we saw in the EXIF tool, right? The image width, the image height, the bit depth, so very important things for an image. How is it compressed, for example, filter method. 
All right, and then we can continue and there are ancillary chunks which are stored. And let's learn a little more about our specific case. So let's look for Pico CTF. I'm gonna search, well, it didn't work so well. Oh, I see, I have to type here. Let's look for Pico and we can find it at the very bottom. And so we know this is gonna be defined somehow as a chunk. And it would be cool to understand this a little more so we could learn something about PNGs. We see here, it seems like it declares itself as text. And if we look through, we can see there is a text chunk type that's defined in here. And it says it can store text that can be represented in this encoding with one key value pair for each chunk. The key must be between one and 80 characters long. The separator is a null character. The value can be any length, uh, including zero. All right, this is not as good a description, although this is a good description, as the official spec. And this is also a fun page because you can see this is from 1996. So it's been around a long time, super dated looking website, but W3C, those are the people that define the internet. And we can see definitions here of different chunks. The critical chunk, I header that we talked about earlier, palette, I end, and as we go down, we're gonna find text, textual data. And this is a much nicer description here. It's the exact same stuff we were reading, one to 79 bytes, a null separator, and then n bytes. And let's break down this chunk just quickly so we fully understand things. So we see the text declaration, which we know is the first or the second four bytes. So there should be a length declaration before that. Again, of four bytes. So what that tells us is there's a length of 32 for the data chunk. You can see down here, it gives us a translation of the value hexadecimal 20 into signed 8-bit or unsigned. It's the same, same in both. So 32 bytes of data. We see our key is artist here. Then we have the null byte, 00. zero. And then this should be 32 bytes of data, I believe, defining Pico CTF. And you could have found this using other types of tools. There are many different ways you can look at hex dumps. Here's XSD, XXD, excuse me. There's also hex editor, which you know, maybe you think is a little nicer or, or perhaps not as nice. I don't know. You can find the thing that works for you. This one makes you look like a cool hacker guy, but that seems kind of like a pain. Anyway, many tools, learn how to use them, and then you won't be reliant on just getting lucky by putting in something like XF tool. All right, hopefully this was helpful to you. If it was, please help me out by liking, subscribing, commenting, etc. Thanks a lot. Bye.